So the most common question that I get asked by aspiring developers is, do you have any tips on how I can get started um, with my company, starting a game company? And I'll often ask back, well, sure. Um, why don't you tell me a little bit about where you are in the process and what your idea is or what you're hoping to accomplish. And you know, most people are out there are just have this idea that it'd be great to start a company and have people working for you, making games and living the dream, so to speak. Um, before you get to that point, uh, it's, it's important to consider what it is that you want to really do. What are your goals? What is your unique angle? And what do you have to offer that nobody else in the market can currently offer? So I'll often uh, kind of just try to coach people through that process and have a little dialogue asking some simple questions. Um, and these are questions that you can ask yourself as you're looking into um, getting started. So one of those questions is, um, what is the product? Uh, what is the vision of the type of game that you want to create for the first game in your company? And that will help kind of define sort of for you and for the team you're working with, um, the goals, the objectives, the feel, um, all the different aspects of what's going to drive you together and make sure everyone's on the same page and delivering this unique thing to the marketplace. Um, once you've got an idea of sort of what the game is about, uh, whether it's an RTS, a first-person shooter, um, a turn-based game, whatever, is to ask um, the question um, to, to your target consumer, you know, who, who's playing this game? Um, what's the target audience? And it, it's important to, to think about audience in terms of not just, well, everybody plays this game. Everyone's going to love this game, right? It's, uh, it's a certain type of player that you want to reach, right? Maybe it's somebody like you, same age group, same gender, um, that's, that has an interest in a particular type of game. And so um, the question you want to ask is, or be able to answer for this person really is, why would this person who's never played your game before want to play this game that you're creating for them? And you've got to approach that question from the standpoint of, well, they, they don't have a game to try out right now. You've got to be able to, to think about the key selling points. What about the pitch you're making is going to incite interest in that player? And that forces you or challenges you to think about things like uh, the unique elements. Um, what makes you different from another game that's out there? Because oftentimes people will say, well, you know, my game is kind of like a combination of this game over here and that game over there mixed with this game over here. And it's like they're all the games that they like playing, but they haven't, they haven't drawn out the unique angle that connects the two of them or the three of those things together. So I encourage you to, as you're exploring this, this notion of starting a company, to think about those type of things as your first starting step. Uh, the very next thing you want to do, once you're able to answer that question about your product, is to start doing some research to determine uh, whether there is, in fact, a demand for the product. Um, one of the, the hardest challenges of getting a game off the ground, um, particularly as an indie developer, is that um, there's the, uh, you know, the marketing aspect. How, how am I going to acquire users, draw a crowd to attention for this game? There's often this belief that, you know, if you build it, they will come, you know, feel the dream style. And um, in my experience, I've come to realize that, that really isn't true. Um, people don't come because it's a great product. And many awesome products out there that are created um, simply never become a success um, because they never had a chance to get in front of their target audience. So um, the first step is, is there an audience? And I would encourage research on things. Um, there's a lot of great uh, resources that can help offer out. One of the ones I've looked at is uh, EDAR. It's a company that focuses on gaming marketing demographics. They've got free resources available on their website that kind of talk about the gaming market and different um, segmentations you can look at, um, different audience groups, what their play behaviors are. Um, another great resource, believe it or not, is, uh, is Facebook. Um, when you go to look at things like your ad campaign, you can use that tool to try to identify uh, unique characteristics like I want people that only play um, that like D and D that like Magic the Gathering and are you know 24 to 34 year old males and you can put these demographics into the ad campaign and they'll give you an estimate target reach as to how big your audience might potentially be. It's it's a great way to determine you know of the different qualities you're trying to put in your game um, how big is that audience. And, and remember also that audience size is not about, well, if I get all of these people in this group and all these people in this group, I've got twice as many people I can reach out to. 
Um, when you intersect two genres, you want to be looking at like a Venn diagram where there's two circles combined together and you're targeting that area in the center point of that circle. That's the audience. It's often going to be a lot smaller than the single genre by itself because those unique combination points are the niches, uh, the, the areas that aren't being reached by other competitors uh, that you can target. So there's some helpful advice for this week. Um, let me know your thoughts and any particular questions that you'd like me to probe further on, and I'll cover that in next week's post. Thanks so much.